Hey there, YouTubers, right? So Dave's troubleshooting guide for updating a BIOS without a CPU, GPU, or RAM. Now, I've done a lot of videos on this, I believe nine to be exact. We've covered a lot of this information in different videos. Um, hopefully you paid attention in those videos, but obviously if you haven't, you're uh, watching this or you have some other problem. So let's get into it. USB thumb drive, right? Ensure formatting is FAT32, okay? Now, I'm not just saying this to say it, but here is an example from ASRock, all right? Uh, USB flash drive must be FAT32. Same thing here, gigabyte, all right? USB flash drive must be FAT32. Now I could, you know, continue to show all the other ones, um, but uh, hopefully you get the point, right? All right. If your current drive is large size, 120 gig, possibly try a smaller size. I, you know, personally, folks, what I would do is go buy a brand new one, buy a brand new name brand from somewhere like Newegg, uh, maybe Amazon, Best Buy. Get a one to four gigabyte USB 2.0. Make sure it's, you know, a real legit brand name and it's authentic. All right. Uh, and use that for this. Format that to FAT32. Now, I personally use 128 gigabyte added a USB 3.0 or Gigastone USB 2.0. They work fine, um, 9 out of 9 or whatever on these videos. Um, but you'll see from comments from other people, you know, a lot of comments, uh, you know, going with the smaller size has worked better for them. They had issues with 3.0. Uh, so, you know, they've had to partition a bigger drive whatever it may be, right? So just because your thumb drive gets read on one computer does not necessarily mean that when you're in the BIOS um, that your computer's going to actually read that thumb drive, all right? I've seen that before here plenty of times. BIOS file. Ensure you have the exact BIOS file for your computer. Double check, triple check if you have to, all right? So motherboards these days, you've got DDR4 versions, DDR5, You've got Wi-Fi, it may say Wi-Fi, ACAX versus non-Wi-Fi, B760 versus B760M, Z690 versus B760, right? All of those will have different BIOS files, all right? So um, let's go ahead and just do a, a quick search so I can demonstrate this because, you know, you may not believe it. Sorry, I got to back up a little bit. All right. So Gigabyte B660M DS3H. Uh, there isn't a DDR4, excuse me, 5 version. But what there is, is uh, if I search for this, I get this motherboard, right? However, if I want a Wi-Fi version, I would search for that, okay? Now, um, that is not the actual motherboard that I want. It's this one, all right? Notice there, when you do that search, it pops up with the micro ATX and the full size ATX. So, you know, be careful of that. All right. Um, just to do another one that I have that I know has uh, multiple motherboards. The Aris Elite. AXZ690, there's a uh, DDR5 version, which is this one, and then, and then there's also a uh, DDR4, okay? So um, that is important in your search. Now, if we wanted to actually go find the BIOS file, um, pretty much always the same. There's a support up here. You always want the second one down below. So we click on that, and then Downloads you're going to go to BIOS, all right? Always grab the uh, most up-to-date, but read all of these other updates, okay? So for this motherboard, F3 was the first launch. Read all this stuff. Make sure that it doesn't say, hey, you have to do this BIOS update first, okay? Because uh, once in a blue moon, that does happen. Uh, it doesn't happen too often. I haven't, I haven't seen it in, I feel like, years, so I'm kind of regurgitating uh, something that maybe doesn't need to be regurgitated anymore. But just be careful. Always read this. 
because guess what? This tells you to update this driver, all right? Um, and it really wants you to do it before you do 13th gen. So now, have I done this before um, doing that? No, I've updated the BIOS and then come back and done this, this update. So um, just keep that in mind. All right. So along these lines, you know where the BIOS is. You would click on this file, all right? download it and then we'll say show in folder then we want to extract all all right so here's our file all right there's our file now what's the next step and this is the same for all of these that you have to rename you actually have to rename this file so what we have to do is find out what to rename the file to, okay? And this doesn't just jump out at you. You have to go to Manual. And in this case, we're looking for unique features. We'll pull this up. And somewhere here it tells you. Hopefully I didn't jump over it. I might, there we go. Using QFlash Plus. So if you're doing gigabyte errors, it's going to be the same thing. I would go in here, folks, and copy so I have the exact text. Then I'm going to come back over here, find my BIOS file. You see that F23A. I'm going to paste that in there, and then I'm hitting delete to get rid of everything else. It's going to ask me if I want to change it. Yes, I do. All right. So that is basically, you know, very important. Must rename, as it says also, FAT32, right? So we go back. The directions say to rename it, rename it exactly what it says. Um, and so I showed you that. Now, place the file on the root directory of your USB drive, all right? So I don't know if I have. Root drive means, you know, this is not the, the root drive, okay? Being in an upper level uh, folder, or lower level folder, sorry. I wanna be right here, okay? This is, you want that file at the same level where these guys are, okay? All right, that is, that is highly important, right? It's not gonna find out if it's not at the root directory. BIOS file, grab the latest file, however you should always read it. So I already told you about that, okay? Now, make sure you put the USB drive in the right USB port. Look at the manual or unique features manual. Um, so, the uh, it should be in the regular manual. This is uh, unique features is where you find out what to name it. All right. So, um, A on this example, it's right here. All right. So, if we go back to our example that we're looking at. We're in manuals, okay? I don't want the BIOS setup guide. And there's nothing set over here. This this is the file I want, all right? And I'm gonna scroll down until I find the IO view. And hopefully I didn't scroll over it already. There it is. So, um, in this example, it's probably this one, D in this example, okay? Now let's zoom in a little bit, a bunch actually. All right, so D, Q flash port plus, there it is, all right? And I think on this motherboard, it's colored red. So you must do that for your um, for your motherboard. Now, here is an ASRock Z690 Pro RS that we did. Uh, their manual actually they don't they call their manuals different things, but uh, this also shows you you know where the BIOS file where that USB uh, needs to be plugged into. This is the actual port, right? Make sure you get that from your manual. Now you can see from the different pictures, it's in a different spot. Now it may specifically say on your IO shield, 
which one is which, okay? So um, keep that in mind. You might not have to find them manually. You might just have to look at your IO shield. All right. Takes time to update. So six to eight minutes of BIOS update light blinking, all right? You want that. If you don't get that, if it's 10 seconds, if it's 30 seconds, if it's a minute, it most likely didn't work, folks. There's something that went wrong, all right? Um, yeah, you could always plug that 13th in and try and fire it up, but most likely it's not going to work, all right? So, um, you know, what caused it not to work? Could it be the thumb drive? Could it be the motherboard? Um, you know, there's always, hey, if I can return this and get a 700 series, you might have less headache, all right? I can't really put that as a troubleshooting guide item, but, uh, you know, 700 series is going to be less headache for 13th gen. Power supply, okay? Directions consistently say to ensure that the power supply is hooked up, okay? So that means the 24-pin connector is plugged in, um, that it's plugged into the wall, and the switch on the power supply is on, all right? I have never tried it any other way, and I'm 9 of 9 for these updates, all right? Um, so ATX power supply is what you're looking for. And it's going to have the 24-pin motherboard connector, or 20 plus 4. Um, and then you also see some comments about uh, connecting CPU power connector. Uh, I have not always done this, um, and it's, it seems to work either way. So whether that's important or not is another story. Um, I don't know if these guys actually tell you it. Uh, let's find the other one we're looking at. Connect the power cable to the 12 volt power connector. Connect either one if there are two. Um, so this is the 24 pin and these should be your CPU. All right. So if you have on this motherboard, there's two, um, there are two CPU power headers. And so you could plug into either one of those. All right. But if you don't, it it most likely will work anyways. All right, back to this. Uh, so do I need to remove, um, or excuse me, do I need the CPU, RAM, and GPU removed? I did an example video somewhere on here, and uh, I had all that crap plugged in still, and it worked. All right. I can't say that it works for all the manufacturers. Um, obviously, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass to unplug, unhook everything. Uh, that may be, you know, something you may have to do, but, uh, most likely it will work with everything plugged in. All right, folks. So that's my troubleshooting guide. Hope you got something out of it. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.